Okay, so here we are with Dijkstra's shortest path algorithm, and we're going to look at how we trace it as we need to for the A-level computer science, as opposed to decision maths or any other time you may come across this. So we've got um, our graph in front of us here that we're going to be um, finding the path for, and we're going to be moving from um, A through to G, and we want to find the shortest path to do that. So the first thing you're going to need to do for this is to produce an adjacency matrix of your graph. And um, you should know how to do this. So basically, uh, very simply, um, you put all the nodes or vertexes that you've got uh, across the top and across the bottom of the board, sort of going horizontally and going uh, vertically. And then you just show the weightings that there were between each of the nodes. So, for example, if you have a quick look here, between A and B was 4, between A and C is 3, and A and D is 7. So if we look at our chart, you will see that between A and B is 4, A and C is 3, A and D is 7. And we have no links between um, E, F, and G with A. So we use this little infinity sign because it's an infinite distance. There is no connection at all. Um, and the distance between A and itself is obviously zero, and that carries through for B, C, D, E, N, F, and G. So I trust that you're able to produce those. We're not going to go into that right now. Uh, what we are going to go into is how we work out the shortest path. So to do that, we need a new table. We're going to call it distances uh, from A because we all start from, we're starting from A. Uh, that's the start of our uh, path. And we're trying to work out the distances, the shortest distances for each of the potential nodes from A. So let's call that distances from A so that we know what it is. Okay, and um, we're going to need to, actually I'm just going to move that over slightly, I need a little bit more space. Um, we need to have for every one of the different vertices uh, a little box, so A, and I'm going to leave a bit of space uh, next to it actually, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Okay, fill it all in. And we need to also write down maybe what our current vertex is that we're looking at. So that's going to be the vertex we're going to put here. And step, the number in our trace table that we're up to. So let's just cordon this off a little bit so that we don't get distracted by it. Oh, hello, what happened there? Let's try that again. Excellent. So, okay, we've got our distances from A, we're going to be filling those in here, and we've got the step that we're currently on and the vertex that we're currently traversing. So, we need to now work out, uh, we're going to start at A, and we want to work out the distances of all the different nodes or vertices from, vertices, from A. Uh, so, step one, we start with A, and we work out the distances from A. And this is really pretty easy because we've already got that information uh, in that first row. It's it's just a question of copying these numbers over. So uh, distance from A is zero and we went via vertex A. And that's something we'll look at in a minute but you have to sort of write down what have we gone through to get to this. Um, that's in relation to our our graph from before, so we've gone through kind of A to get to itself, which is a bit odd in this first instance, but just keep going with it. Okay, B is four away from A, and we got there via A. C is three away from A, and we got there via A. D is seven away, and we got there via A. And E, F, and G, there is no, we don't need to fill it out. There is no um, connection. So we don't know yet 
how far away from A they are. Okay, how do we get onto step two? Well, we need to find the smallest value. Oh, by the way, if you then finish going through an A, you kind of, or a vertex, you can then sort of tick it off to say, we're no longer gonna consider that one when we look for a shortest path, because we've already got the shortest path. So we now look at our remaining uh, paths from A and we find the, the lowest value, which in this case is C. So, because it's only three away from A. So we're gonna do vertex C and uh, we've already found the shortest path of A, so we just copy it down again. Uh, now, from C, what's the distance for B? Well, there is no link between B and C, so we, we're still on 4A. We just bring that down again. We haven't, we haven't improved upon that. Uh, C, well, C has a distance of zero from itself. So what we do is we get the distance we've already got from A, which is we're three away from A. Then we add how far away we are from C, which is zero to that. So it becomes three still, but now we've got there via C. Okay, D. D is three away from C. So how far away is it from A? Well, it must be three plus the three that C is away from A. So C to A is three and D to C is three. So the distance of D from A, because that's what this table is telling us, distances from A, not distances from C. We just happen to be looking at vertex C. It's distances from A is six. And we got there via C. Okay, let's look at E. E is five away from C, which means it must be eight away from A, because again, it took us three steps to get to C from A. So we've got five plus three is eight, and we've got there via C, and we don't have any values yet for f or g so we've done uh, a and we've done c so we can tick this one off so of our numbers that remain b has the smallest value it's the nearest it's the next nearest one to a so let's look at that next so step three is b and we copy down our value for a and we look at B. Well, B is zero away from itself, of course. Um, so, and itself is four away from A. So it is now four, but via B. Um, and C, we've already got, so we just put three C in again. Again, we don't need to check that one again because we've already covered C. Um, we've actually now covered B, so we can tick B off. So it leaves us just D, E, F, and G. So B to D. That's one, but B to A is four. So via B, A to D must be five, which is nearer. And we write that in. If, if it was a bigger number than uh, six or seven, we wouldn't, we wouldn't write it in. There'd be no point because we've, it's going to be a longer distance, but we've now improved on D every time. Originally, D was seven away. Then we found that if we went via C, we could get there in six. Now we found if we go via B, we can get there in five. Okay, uh, let's look now. Um, e has no relation, so we just take the information we already have, which is eight via C. F is five away. Five away plus the original four it took us to get there means it's nine away via B. And we still don't have a route yet to G. So let's look, what have we got left? Five, eight, nine. Well, five is clearly the smallest and five takes us to vertex D. So let's try that. Step four, vertex D. Well, we can copy over these values that we've already got. And we're on to D. So D is zero away from itself, and its nearest route to A currently is five via B. So we can now say that via D, D is indeed five away. Uh, e is two away from D, 
and D is five away from A, so E via D is seven. Five plus that two is seven via D. So we've improved upon our eight. So we get rid of the eight, we replace it with the seven. F is two away from D, and again, D is five away from A. Uh, so that means that F is also seven. And we finally got our first G as well. G is seven away from D and D is five away from A. So seven plus five is 12. So D is 12 away from A uh, via D. All right, okay, we've done D, we tick D off. So we're left with seven, seven and 12. Now at this stage, it doesn't really matter which of these two sevens we take, they're equal, but we might as well just take the first one. So we're gonna say our next step five, we're gonna look at E and we can copy all these initial values over because we know we've covered those. Uh, so we're onto E now. Well, E is obviously zero away from itself and it's seven away from A. So now it's gonna be seven away from A via E. Um, F is, uh, where is it? F, there is no link. So we just pull down the seven D again. And E is now two away from G and E is seven away from A. So seven plus two is nine, which beats our 12. So we can pretend, or sorry, we can forget the 12 root, the, the root via D that takes 12 steps. And we can now use this root that is nine steps via E. So that's pretty good going. Okay, we can cross up E. Now we've got two different routes now to G. So if we'd just stopped here thinking, ha ha we've reached G, we would never have found this shorter route. Um, which is kind of the point of the whole algorithm. Um, but we, we may have finished, but we don't know for certain. So we're just gonna finish this off by doing the uh, F row just for certain. So step six, let's try F. Well, we can copy all these over. And we know that seven is zero away from its, uh, sorry, F is zero away from F. So it's obviously seven away. And F has a, um, uh, a distance from G of five. Well, it itself is seven away from A, seven plus five takes us back to the 12 again we had before. So we could put in 12 via F, but why on earth would we have replaced our distance, our best distance from uh, for G from A with a greater distance? So we're not gonna do that. So raise that, it's not better. So we just put back the 9E that we had, which is indeed our shortest path. So how do we now actually work the path out? Well, we just have to do a little bit of backwards traversal, and that's where these letters we've been putting in are really, really useful. So we know that we finish at G, because that's our end point. So let me choose another nice color. So we're gonna finish with G. How did we get to G? Well, we got there via E. So our next path, uh, our next node on the path is E. Uh, how did we get to E? Well, E, we got there via uh, D. How did we get to D? Well, the best way we got to D was via B. And how did we get to B? Well, we got there via A. So our shortest path is A, B, D, E, G. Let's look at our graph again. A, B, D, E, G. That's our shortest path. And we can verify that. So it's four plus one plus five plus two, seven plus two is nine. And indeed, that's what we're told here. It is indeed nine away. And that's the shortest path we could have done. If we'd taken any other routes, it would have been like maybe A, B, F, G. That would have been four, 14, so that's longer, and so on. So this is our shortest path. So that's how you go about finding and tracing. This here is our trace table. This shows the steps we've taken 
and it shows the vertex that we were looking at each time and it shows how our distances from a which is actually just a single dimension array has updated its value each step through we always update it when we find a shorter path if we don't find a shorter path we don't update it and crucially these values you get them by looking at well what is the distance of let's in this say in this case e from c plus the distance that c was from a and that's how those those values come out okay so i hope that makes some sense my recommendation is you do some practice um, and make sure that you can do this by memory uh, and by rote because it's a, something you will need to be able to do it could well come up in an exam it's a very um it's a very meaty question there's lots and lots they could ask you they could easily ask you for example they could show you a graph and ask you to identify the algorithm that you could use to find the shortest path they could ask you to label different parts of the graph they could ask you then to draw your adjacency matrix based on the graph then they could ask you to perform Dijkstra's shortest path algorithm step, uh, tracing out all the steps and showing what the ultimate path is and what the shortest distance is. So you could ask like 20 mark question on this. So it's well worth knowing it off by heart.